Nora O'Donnell will become only the third woman in American history to anchor, solo anchor, an evening network newscast. I recently had the chance to talk with Nora about her new adventure. First of all, Nora, we are big fans of Nora O'Donnell here in Connecticut for a number of reasons. Obviously, you're a great journalist. You're friends with Gail King. You interviewed my wife, Kara Sundlin, on your program about her book. But most importantly, you're sort of a Connecticut person because your husband's from here. Tell us about that. That's right, uh, Dennis. Um, my husband, Jeff Tracy, is from Hartford, Connecticut, and I met him my freshman year in college. And so I've been going back to Hartford for the past, um, you know, 20 years. So I know the city very, very well. And so, and we still have lots of family that watch. So it's a great station and great city. Well, we'll leave the light on for you next time you're in town. First of all, congratulations <laughs> um, on this new position of yours. It's a seat once held by the legendary Walter Cronkite. What do you think about that? What kind of responsibility comes along with that? Well, I'm incredibly humbled um, by the responsibility, and I'm honored to, to anchor the CBS Evening News. This is a legacy broadcast and anchored by Walter Cronkite for more than two decades, and he was known as the most trusted voice in America, and I think that's why people still have such an affinity and a reverence for the evening news, because this is, I think, the broadcast of record um, where you can get uh, the truth, um, where there's real news, unbiased source of information. If you want affirmation, you can turn on one of the cable channels. If you want information, you can turn on the, the CBS Evening News, and we take that response responsibility very seriously because Cronkite said journalism is what we need to make democracy work. That's true. That's absolutely true. So we need an unbiased source in order to make those types of decisions and we take that responsibility very seriously here at, at CBS. You've covered six different presidents in your career. Who was the most difficult to cover? Oh, wow, that's a good <laughs> question. I have I've I know I've I've covered all of those presidential elections as a reporter, you know, I mean, been out on the road. Uh -huh. So I covered I covered the tail end of the, the Clinton White House. I didn't. Okay. Uh, and then I covered um, certainly Bush um, and Obama. I was the chief White House correspondent for Obama and then uh, with President Trump. Well, I haven't covered uh, the current Trump administration, you know, as a White House reporter because I was anchoring the CBS sure. Evening News. I think in some ways the access has become more difficult because they stopped having the, the daily press briefings. There's been a contentious relationship between the press and the president, although that has historically been true through many as well, but this is especially uh, contentious. But President Trump, you must give him some credit. He does do a fair amount of interviews. You saw he just sat down with NBC and with ABC. And so in some ways he does provide at least more one-on-one -on -one access that, than we've seen uh, past presidents do. You know, one of the problems I know that we face is trying to get younger people to watch the news these days because they're on their phones, they look at Twitter, they get their news from Instagram, Facebook, things like that. How difficult is it for you to get these younger viewers back to the CBS Evening News? Well, look, we have to make sure that we share the incredible reporting and journalism that we do on multiple sources of devices or whatever they may be. So the CBS Evening News is streamed on CBSN at 10 o'clock. You can also go on the CBS News app and watch it there. I share a lot of what we do um, on my Facebook page and on Twitter. So even though they may not be tuning in at 630, they're getting the, what is this incredibly important journalism on the different mediums with which we share um, our great reporting. And so that's okay with me because I think we need an informed electorate and we need to, and we want that electorate to know that there is a trusted source of journalism and, I, and journalism can have impact. It can change. It can make great change. We, we've seen that, you know, um, time and time again. Watergate being, you know, the most obvious example. Some of the incredible reporting that CBS Evening News has done on exposing continued abuse in the Catholic Church and cover-up and the changes that have taken place as a result of that. So I never, I never take for granted the, the power and responsibility that journalism has. And I think young people get that. And we still have an enormous uh, audience, uh, millions and millions of people that tune into the evening news every night at 630 because this is such a revered broadcast. It certainly is. Our general manager Dana Neves is a working mom. My co-anchor Denise is a working mom. My wife Kara is an anchor here and a working mom. How do you juggle it all? Motherhood and being a journalist because as you know you get these calls in the middle of the night or at any time of day to go to work mm -hmm. and do things. Mm -hmm. Well, I have three kids. I have a 12-year-old twins and an 11-year-old, and they are my joy. And, um, you know, part of the reason I've been able to have a successful career and be able to, um, 
you know, be a mom of, of three kids that are almost all virtually the same age is a support team. And it starts certainly with uh, my husband, who has been incredibly supportive. But I always say, you know, build a strong support team around you, not only at home, but certainly at work. And that's one of the ways to succeed is that we all lean on one another. And women are very good at leaning on one another. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's what helps us the most. Well, we are big Nora O'Donnell fans here in Connecticut. So we wish you the very best of luck. And next time you're in town, we'd love to see you. Well, I love Hartford, too. Thank you so much.